Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In this video, we are going to be talking about the inverse kinematics of robots. Even if you haven't heard about this term before, don't worry, I'm going to start from the very basics. So before we dive into the inverse kinematics, we need to talk about something called forward kinematics. And even before that, we need to uh, have a look at this robot, which is a six degree of freedom robot and, and start from there. So first and foremost, how do I know that this robot right here is a six degree of freedom robot? So the very basic thing to figure out the degree of freedom of a robot is to determine how many different motors are there in a robot. So on the right, I can see a slider and I can rotate this slider to make each of the motor rotate independently. So this is my first degree of freedom. This is my second degree of freedom. This is my third degree of freedom. This is my fourth degree of freedom. This is my fifth degree of freedom. And this is my sixth degree of freedom. So now I know that this robot is a six degree of freedom robot. Now the second thing is what is forward kinematics? We have talked about this in our previous videos, but just to recap, in forward kinematics, what you do is you already have a robot with you and you input the specific put a specific um, angle of the motors. So in this case, uh, what I would do is I would input the angle of the motors. So here I can see the angles on the right. So what I do is I just input these specific angles, 10 degrees, 19 degrees, let's say. And for theta 2, I just have 20 degrees, let's say, and so forth. So I already have the angles of the robot. I just input it into the robot software and the robot does what it does, right? And it goes to a particular position and orientation based on the angles that I provided. So this is what forward kinematics is. You input the angles of the motors and it makes the end effector, which is the tip of the robot go wherever it needs to be. Or rather, I would say you just input the angles of the robot and based on that angles, the end effector goes to whatever point is determined by those angles. However, if you think about in a real world scenario, that is not what we want. Because in a real world scenario, we want the robot to do a particular task. Let's say there is a table right here, or there's an object that the robot needs to grab or do something with an object. So what you would need or you would want the robot to do is to go and grab that object or manipulate that object in some way. So now what you essentially need to do is you already know your desired position and orientation of the end effector. So you know the position and orientation of the end effector that you want. And you have to go backwards from the, that point and you have to determine what, what robot parameters or what rotations of the motors are needed to place that end effector at your desired position and orientation. So one way to do would be to just play around with the angles and do a bit of trial and error and see what would place your robot at your desired position. So I can essentially spend the entire day do, fiddling around with it and try and achieve my desired position or orientation. And that isn't very effective. And so we have a technique to do all of this, which is known as inverse kinematics and which is very intuitive, right? If we call one technique to be forward kinematics, the opposite of it is inverse kinematics. And that is all it is. So let me pull up another robot just to show you one more type of a robot. So this is another robot. And just by looking at it, I can see that it is a six degree of freedom robot. Why? Because there's going to be a one motor here. There's going to be one motor here. There's going to be three motors here. So I can just rotate the motors one motor here, the second motor here, third here, and then fourth, fifth, and sixth. So it is a six degree of freedom robot. Now coming back to our original robot, I want you to focus on something. So here is our robot again. And let me just put it at some random position. Yeah. And what I want you to focus is at the tip of the end effector. So you see that 
even though the robot is moving around but the tip remains at the same position right so what we call this is the position of the end effector remains the same but the orientation changes right so even here the position remains the same but the orientation changes and that is something to keep in mind that it is possible for us to keep the position of the end effector same but change the orientation of the robot so now talking or rather just recapping what we have just covered in this video so far so we have talked about forward kinematics and inverse kinematics what is forward kinematics it is basically you are given the robot parameters which is the motor angle is theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 however many motors we have and we determine the end effector location and orientation based on those so xyz is my end effector location and my orientation i have just try to draw out three different orientations of the end effector just to give you an idea so that is my forward kinematics and what is inverse kinematics exactly the reverse so you have the desired location and orientation of the end effector and based on that you determine the robot parameters and that is what we do in real life as well you do the inverse kinematics here i have the same robot and just to quickly revise what inverse kinematics is what you would want to do is you would want the robots and effector to let's say come at this point right here um, and at this particular orientation so what you would have is that this point the the location of this point the xyz coordinates of this point and on top of that you would have the orientation of the end effector so orientation and the orientation is expressed as a rotation matrix we have talked about rotation matrix in one of the previous videos and all that this matrix shows you is the rotation of the end effector so you can always go back and check out one of those videos now Coming again to how do we do inverse kinematics. So now I have the same robot and a small video of it which just shows you that even though the position of the end effector remains the same but the orientation changes. So when doing the inverse kinematics what we do is we deal with the position and orientation as being two different things. So we deal with position and orientation as being two different things. We break them out into two, two different parts and we deal with each of them individually. Since this video is becoming too long I won't go into the mathematics of how we do it. But in my next video I'm going to dive into the orientation of it and then the position of it. So for the orientation part what we assume is that the last three axes of the robot which i have shown in this figure the last three axes which is axis a axis b and axis c are the ones that are responsible for the orientation and all the other axes before those are responsible for the position of the robot so let's say if i have a six degree of freedom robot so the first three the first three motors would be responsible for the position of the end effector why the last three motors or the last three joint would be responsible for the orientation of the robot and that is what we call a robotic wrist so robotic wrist is the last three joints so you would hear this term very often a robotic wrist and all it means is the last three rotation axis of a robot and again we consider or we kind of assume that the robotic wrist is the only thing that is responsible for the orientation of the robot and it always comprises of the last three joints so in the next video i'm going to be dealing specifically with the orientation part of inverse kinematics that is how do we ensure that we get a particular orientation from the robot so what last what angles of the last three joints do i need in order to make the robot have a particular orientation of the end effector and then in the video after that i'm going to talk about the position of the robot so essentially what i'm going to do is i'm in my next video i'm going to talk about the orientation which is 
basically my theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6, my three angles. If I am counting my theta 1 to be my first angle, so counting outwards, so theta 4, theta 5, theta 6, my last three angles are going to be responsible for my orientation. And for the position, it is going to be my first three motors or my first three angles, theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Hope that makes sense and that is intuitive um, and similarly if I have a redundant let's say 8 degree of freedom robot so in that case the position is going to be response the like the first five motors are going to be responsible for the position and the last three motors or the last three joints are going to be responsible for the orientation of the robot. Throughout the video I have been talking about motors just because in the robot that I have shown you it is all revenue joints but the same concepts apply even if you have prismatic joints so you have like actu linear actuators instead of motors so the same thing applies in that case as well hope this video was useful for you and you liked the video if you did don't forget to subscribe and here's the next video and i hope you do watch that video and as always see you in the next video thank you for watching